Bordeaux. Welcome to Expansive. I am Yao Tomlu. And finally, we've made our way down to the bunker from Splendid Games and Wales Interactive. This long-awaited full-motion video game has been in development for quite a while now. It's been hyped and built up for over the last year. We've seen snippets here. We've seen expectation kind of delivered through little trailers and sneak peeks. But now it's finally here and we get to see Adam Brown in this full fallout of post-apocalyptic glory to see how he fares in this crazy bunker, what kind of secrets are down there, who he is, so yeah, what it has actually been a really long time since we've seen these games and actually funnily enough when I was playing this my girlfriend asked me you know is this the first game of its kind have we ever had anything like this before and I had to explain to her that actually no I mean it's just because it's been such a long time I mean there were games like Under the Killing Moon, Tex Murphy, The Seventh Guest, Eleventh Hour even going as far back as Night Trap on the Mega CD which is Definitely worth a YouTube experience if you've never heard or seen anything from it. it it's an experience and a half. Um, but anyway, despite that, I mean, this it's just been a very long time since we've had a full motion video captured game like this. And actually, it's, it's not that surprising because those kind of games, the video quality was a little bit grainy. The sound effects weren't so good. The acting wasn't there. Whereas you play the bunker, you can see immediately the production values are just through the roof. I mean, this has been done properly. This has been done expertly. You can feel the level of authenticity with it. You've kind of got like that real aura of a film about it. Um, but there is a kind of a lack of puzzles, which is a bit concerning for a game like this. Because as it's so narrative driven, you would hope that there was a bit more to kind of interact with and make you think. Uh, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case with the bunker, which was a little bit concerning. Having said all of that, I mean, the, the, the narrative, I think, is engaging enough and the scene sequences really kind of draw you in and they kind of make you think about what's going on and they try to, like, you're constantly thinking to yourself, you know, how is this going to resolve? Who's done what? Was he ever going to see the light of day again? Will he ever escape the bunker? Is the bunker there to be escaped? You know, there's all kinds of questions buzzing through your mind as you're playing through this game. And as I said before, this is really, really well acted. I mean, you have to think that Adam Brown spends most of this time acting off himself um, there's not really a lot apart from the environment and apart from obviously the script he's basically doing a lot of the legwork himself and he's engaging he's you in this narrative on his own through his facial expressions through his reactions to things for the way that you know he's developed a backstory to this character so you're kind of getting a feel for what life has been like for him these last 30 years in this bunker um, and it's just genuinely you know really interesting and it's quite amazing to see this kind of acting tour de force 27 years um which is a great game and it's perhaps a little less survival horror than you might expect this is a little gross though i have to admit this is a bit crazy eating beans while you're having a shit i mean come on i suppose you know it's going to get rid of them pretty much straight away so i mean that's quite effective it's quite you know quite economical in a sense but yeah i mean this is just a very interesting sort of narrative driven experience again there are some concerns a lack of puzzles but it is enjoyable nonetheless. I think initially you'll find the story threads seem a little out of context at times. And, you know, even though Adam Brown is doing a fantastic job of using his facial reactions and his responses to kind of shape the world that you're seeing, um, sometimes you're not quite sure what's going on. And, and really towards, like, say, the final third of the game, do things start to become a bit clearer. And as a result, the game is probably less survival horror than you're expecting. Um, but as a result, when the scares do come, or when the kind of the fear and the intimidation in the environment starts to take shape, it kind of gets under your skin perhaps more than it would have done because the pacing is just so well executed. And there's lots of great imagery and there's great direction in this as well. I mean, you're seeing like context between life and death when you see um, you know, his birth at the beginning of the game, and then you're seeing the kind of the nuclear fallout that's kind of shaped this environment that you're in, some things environment which you get to read and take a look at and kind of understand the context of the situation and understand what life has been like in this bunker for this extended period of time. And it really is quite compelling because you will find yourself guessing what's going to happen in the game's outcome right until the bitter end. Uh, and you will ask yourself questions as to why Junk. John is really alone in the bunker and what life like has been there and you know whether there's any chance of leaving and as I said compared to previous FMVs the quality is really slick and it's well presented the user interface is quite you know refined the manual I do find though the interactions in this are a little bit frustrating the QTEs of continuously tapping or else like bordering on giving you the RSI um, is sometimes overly long the markers on the screen are sometimes a little too small to kind of identify and kind of pick up on and I also found using the cursor on the PlayStation 4 compared to the PC where you're just using the mouse just to be a little too slow 
Um, you can obviously speed up the sensitivity in the options, and I would recommend that you do that just slightly. I would have actually liked to have used the touchpad on the DS4 to kind of move around with my finger to interact with the environment more. I think that would have actually, you know, really been a better thing to have done, and that would have made the whole experience all the more slick and uh, enjoyable. But um, overall, I would say that the bunker is a very solid, interesting, engaging, and well presented full motion video game. It is rather short, so I will warn you, and the puzzles are a little limited and they say the interactions can be a little bit on the shaky side but all in all this is a fantastic full motion video game it is wonderful to see these back the acting is superb the direction is top notch everything about this just really is just is better it's probably exceeded expectation i think and that's a great thing and hopefully that's a great thing for the future of full motion video games in the industry and hopefully we'll see more and more of these with more actors getting involved really recognizing the opportunities that these present but um yeah, I would definitely give The Bunker a solid 7 out of 10, and uh, I would probably recommend it. It's going to be out on September the 20th. That should be now when you're watching this video, uh, but for now...